untangling the world of environmental organizations, their primary actors, and the secret world of their financing has proven to be a challenging task. What I thought I knew and understood before taking this full-time job pales into comparison to what's actually out there. The current environmental movement has a problem. It's the fact that they are uncompromising and unwilling to put aside their partisanship, and usually that includes hatred of our oil industry and other resource extraction industries. But it also contains contempt for conservatives or anyone who challenges their environmental gospel. Well, last night I went to an event put on by the self-proclaimed nonpartisan Green Pack called The Importance of Nonpartisanship in the Age of Polarized Politics. Could this actually be an example of a green group that was legitimately trying to distance themselves from the very partisan environmental movement? Sadly not. No cameras were allowed in, but I went anyways. And here's what I found out about this so-called nonpartisan group. My first clue that this event wasn't nonpartisan were the panelists. Let's start with Joyce Murray, who is now a third term MP for the Liberal Party. And before that, she was the environment minister in the BC Liberal government under Gordon Campbell. That's right. Joyce Murray was responsible for the BC carbon tax that debuted in 2008. She also ran for Liberal leader against Justin Trudeau. Back then she had the support of the foreign funded Dogwood Initiative and hey, even David Suzuki himself endorsed her. Then there was Vision Vancouver City Councillor Andrea Reimer. Most municipal parties and councillors are technically nonpartisan, but Vision Vancouver is probably the most radical environmental political party at any level of government. They've instituted the Greenest City Plan, which has added tens of thousands of dollars in extra costs to residential construction with specific environmental building standards. And we cannot forget their aggressive anti-Kinder Morgan campaign that Vision Vancouver started and now the city of Vancouver has launched. You know, that doesn't sound very nonpartisan if you ask me. The final panelist was Nancy Olweiler, a professor of public policy at Simon Fraser University. She has associations with no less than seven other environmental groups, but most concerning for me is the Tides Funded Clean Energy Canada program, which now has a partnership with the SFU School of Public Policy. So you get a sense of how intertwined Tides has become with some of Canada's post-secondary institutions. But what about the event itself? Well, it was essentially a panel of back padding, virtue signaling and fear mongering. Joyce Murray bragged about how it was her who pushed for the oil export tanker ban on the north coast of BC and boasted about how Justin Trudeau was going to be a great leader on the climate file because he is someone that has spent so much time in the wilderness growing up. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, that probably is his strongest file. Time in the wilderness, usually shirtless. But she also made sure to demonize conservatives. Rather than admitting the fact that carbon taxes and green building initiatives end up making the cost of living higher, she kept talking about how conservative opposition to climate policy stems from a belief that climate change is a quote, socialist plot. Well, Angie Reimer, the city councillor for Vision Vancouver, was even more revealing about her inability to be nonpartisan, bragging about raising her kids without ever owning a car, proudly explaining her history as a social justice warrior, where she spoke about her history in the environmental movement in the 90s. Then, she really went into the fear mongering, saying things like, quote, climate change is a threat to our survival today, and opposition to their climate policies is, quote, a catastrophe of reason. Then, while completely ignoring the economic hardship that has already started across our country, she proclaimed that she could easily see the next 2019 federal election being all about how green we are as a country. What? I think Ms. Reimer has spent way too much time in her Vision Vancouver greenest city bubble. Then we get to Professor Nancy Oldweiler. And she was probably the most intolerant of conservatives, and she made that known. I guess she felt comfortable that there wouldn't be too many right-leaning folks in attendance, as she even noted that many of the faces she recognized in the crowd were her students. Talk about an echo chamber. She mentioned once how she went to a Manning conference, and rather than talk about the kind of feedback or the environmental policies being discussed at the conference, she just made a snide comment about how everyone there was loving their guns. Oldweiler piled on with the fear-mongering, suggesting it was, quote, too late to act on climate change, as we now must react to rising sea levels and soaring temperatures. Well, you could tell all of them believe so strongly our country and our cities need to become leaders in reducing greenhouse, ga greenhouse gases. 
but they refused absolutely unequivocally to listen to any other argument or science. I wanted to ask the panel a question after the event was over, but they only took three from the 40 or so people in the audience and all of them from current or former SFU students. And I gotta tell you, they were so, so lame. One student even asked why bothering engaging conservatives at all on the environmental file when all we do is deny climate change. Well, before the event, I actually initially reached out to Green Pack to see if media were invited to the event. And initially they said their spokesperson would be available right after the event. But then that changed and suddenly a spokesperson would only be available the next day. And then that was changed to only allowing to ask questions via email directly to Green Pack President Aaron Freeman. Well, his resume and associations with the environmental movement are also extensive. And I did not receive a reply from Aaron to my questions, despite multiple requests. It appears Green Pack is just another example of a green group masking as nonpartisan and in the public interest. But the deep connections from the group and the members of the panel last night with the radical environmental movement are undeniable. The key to it of all, uh, key to all of this, of course, is the foreign funding that allows these groups to exist and operate. So if you are like me and are sick and tired of this money flowing into our country, into our province and into our city and affecting our economy and political process, go check out my petition at tidesout.ca. And if you think you'd like to sign it, please do so. For the rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.